Hello, Verbling.com students. Yes, you are connected to the... It's only the best place in the world to learn a second language. You know I'm talking about Verbling.com, where you can connect 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and improve and develop your English with a native speaking English teacher. Uh, my name is Jeff Watson. I am here this hour to help you all improve and develop your English. We are going to be doing some reading. We are going to be doing some listening. And I hope that all of the students have lots of ideas and opinions about the topic. Now the topic is slightly controversial. It's about, uh, this is a podcast from the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, and they're talking about some of the discussion that's going on in Australia about decriminalizing soft drugs in that country. And so this is a typical topic for people to discuss what should be done uh, about drug laws, etc. And so what I would like to do is to ask everyone, please, there are two documents for you to download. Uh, there is a PDF file uh, produced by the BBC available uh, at the verbling.com website. Look for the information about this class. Just below you'll see the link for the uh, documents. Please download them. And I have prepared another document um, uh, that I'm going to be showing on the screen share. All right, and so what I would like to do is to uh, ask people to say hello, to tell us where they're from, and to talk about, uh, let me see, how big of a problem is drug use in your country? Uh, how much of a negative impact does drug use have in your country? and maybe some of the positive things that people that the people in your country are doing to um, to educate people about the negative effects of drug use and so Fabian hello welcome thank you very much yes so Fabian where are you from I am from to Ecuador okay and so, what are people's uh, attitudes towards drug use, and uh, how much of a negative impact do do drugs have on the people in your country? Um, I don't understand so much. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the the question, my question. Do you understand my question? No, 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 I don't understand. Fine. So we're talking about drugs, and, and so cocaine or marijuana or the... No? Oh, okay. And so we're talking about drugs uh, like marijuana or cocaine, etc. And do these have a negative effect on people? <clears throat> Hello. Yes. Uh, hello, teacher. Well, uh, no, but. Uh, um, okay. Sorry. I understand. Yes? I know. Uh, I know. Fabian, are you still there? Sorry, I'm. I'm speaking with Fabian. Yeah. Yes. Fabian, you need to turn on your microphone. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, I think that uh, the. Uh, Fabian, you need to turn on your microphone. Oh, no, he's gone. Okay. So, uh, mm. unfortunately. Uh, and so, I, I would like to go to Carlos. Hello, Carlos. Where are you connecting from? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Good evening, everybody. I'm connecting from Guatemala. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and talking about your question, mm. um, I think um, in my country it's... Um, a negative impact in uh, the use of any kind of uh, drugs 
uh, but mainly because uh, we are a country uh, that we function like a bridge between um, the producers and and the consumers in in America, and right. for that reason, I think we uh, we're in the we're, we're in the we are in the middle of the problem, and and we we are trying to to deal with this situation. Right, right, exactly. Okay, thank you so much. Great, and and good luck with that issue. And so, uh, uh, Farad, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I, I am here. Yeah. Good. Where where are okay. you connecting from? I'm from Pakistan. Okay, good. And so, what are the attitudes towards drug use in your country? And are a yeah. lot of people negatively affecting their lives with drug use? Yeah, yeah. Uh, here in Pakistan, uh, drugs is a common issue, and uh, a lot of people are suffer because we are uh, uh, our neighbor country, or Afghanistan. So um, a lot of drugs is uh, um, transported into Pakistan. Uh, so okay, I, I wanted to. Uh, there are a lot of negative effects uh, uh, on the people. Uh, I mean that uh, drugs. Uh, um, so uh, the one factor is that um, uh, it's great unemployment. Um, people uh, who uh, who is addict of drug, they they are unable to work. Yes. Just okay. like uh, uh, a lot of people are uh, heroin and uh, cocaine addicts, so hashish uh, and uh, these kind of drugs are mainly. So when they don't work so they are trying to uh, hide the other people property and uh, take on them to get the money from some other person okay. by force right so thank you yeah I'm, okay. I'm going to move on but that's a huge problem uh, uh, so much of the property crime in Canada people stealing cars for example that's a part of the drug addiction problem great thank you uh, Isais hello Hello. Good, good evening. Good all. evening. And and so, where are you connecting from? And uh, is is the drug use by the people in your country a big problem? Yes, unfortunately, yes. I am from Mexico, hmm. and so we have a lot of problems because of drugs. I don't I don't think that the problem is the drug. Uh, the problem maybe is uh, corruption. The Right. The the, government the money. corruption, the police, mm -hmm. that's, is, that's the main uh, problem. Right, right. Now, I lived in Guadalajara for almost two years, and a friend of mine, uh, I'm Canadian, and he is too, a friend of mine worked in the school system there, and he said that Mexican teenagers used much less, far less drugs than Canadian teenagers. So that, that, I thought that was interesting. So there we have more drug use, uh, uh, like drugs like marijuana, for example. I think he was talking about that specifically. So yeah. it's, it's less common in Mexico than it is in Canada. So just and, I, I think, and I think it's easier here to, to get it than, right. than okay. in your country. Yeah. But, and I, I think that's why the, the teenagers and the young young people uh, don't are very attracted to it to the okay. drugs. Okay, they're they're not attracted. Yeah. Okay, not attracted. good. Thank you. And uh, uh, Jadna, yes, please turn on your microphone. Okay. Hello. Where are you connecting from? And yeah, the question I want to ask is uh, how big of an impact does uh, drug use have? on the people in your country. Okay, uh, I'm Hadner, uh, I live in Colombia mm. and um, in Colombia there are a lot of problems because of drug, uh, drugs. Um, mostly uh, teenagers um, use or consume drugs. Uh, I have a cousin uh, that when he was uh, 13 he started uh, consuming drugs. Um, Nowadays, uh, he is living uh, at the streets. In I the mean, streets, he say. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's uh, homeless because of the right. drug. Okay. Uh, yeah. He is uh, uh, very sick because of the drug and very deep in in that world. So yeah. it's a, a big problem 
Um, um, other thing to share is that uh, dealers, Colombian dealers, produce drugs, but in in the United States, uh, are uh, all the drug is consumed. It's, right. You know, <laughs> well, uh, and that's America, uh, yes, in Latin America, there are of course a uh, uh, drug addict. How uh, do you say drug addict? Yeah, d uh, people who are addicted. Yeah, addicted. Yeah, so there are drug, drug addicts. Drug addicts. In, in, in the USA and in Europe, there are more than in Latin America. Yeah, great. Thank you. I'm okay. going to go to uh, Joao. Hello, welcome. Hello, teacher. Thank welcome you. Welcome back. So please tell us where you're connecting from, this new group. Uh, okay. And I, I'd like to ask about the negative impact of drug use uh, by okay. the people in your country. Okay, I'm from Brazil, and I I could see that it's the problem. It's the biggest problem here because involve jo involve our young guys, and I think they are the, our future. And if uh, they involve in with these drugs, they could have a bad future. So I think it's have to con to be confront. To be con to be to, to, uh, to be confronted, confronted with education and uh, with uh, something like that. Okay, excellent. Yeah, no, I, I, okay. Personally, I agree with your opinion. It was well said, and I think education is the key. But uh, great. I'd like to go on to Mauricio. Welcome. Jeff, good, good evening. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> good evening. Yes, welcome. Nice to have you part of the class. Uh, please tell us where you are connecting from and how much uh, of a negative impact does drug use have on the people in your country? Well, my, I'm from Colombia, so you can imagine the consequences we have had uh, through the time. Um, we have been uh, discriminated around the world, and, and besides uh, we have we we have already we already have um, problems um, different variables uh, such as um, teenagers families family destroy uh, this how do you say that destroyed, destroyed? families Famili yeah families yes. destroyed mm -hmm. families destroyed um, well there there is there are there are many consequences around this this problem right right but in in terms uh, yeah uh, it, it's I know that there are so many issues involved with drugs um, yeah and just a, a difficult problem uh, Nestor hello hello Nestor okay we don't hear you you may need to turn on your microphone and Omar hello welcome hello teacher Howie Good, fine. Okay. Please tell the group where uh, you're from. Actually, mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, group. I'm connecting from Gaziantep. Uh, Gaziantep is a city in Turkey. Actually, Gaziantep is the capital of drug trade in Turkey. I actually met some students and discussed with them, why are you addicted for such a thing? Or why are you even trying drug use? And you, uh, since you know what the drug has a ne negative impact in your life, it could destroy your future and take away your dreams. The answer was very surprising. Most of the students said it's only a fad. They okay. said the more I'm extraordinary, the more I'm bad, the more I'm popular. That's their point, actually. Yeah, okay. No, so there is a, uh, and, and I think that maybe had to do with uh, the person from Mexico was saying that drugs are easy to get, there's lots of them around, and so yeah. the kids are not attracted to it because, uh, yeah, okay, great, thank you, uh, that's too bad. Okay, now what I'd like to do is just to explain that we're going to be using a BBC podcast. And so I hope that people can download the PDF document. And I'm going to bring the screen, uh, the document up on the screen share. And we're going to read through the podcast. 
and then I'm going to play the podcast so that everyone can listen to it, and then I hope that people will have more comments to make. So we started off with some great comments. So, Carlos, could you please read the first part of this transcript? And I have edited it a, a little bit. Edited it a little bit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, first part, say hello and welcome yeah. to six Sorry, minutes. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, now let me see. Uh, can, uh, can you see the document on the screen? Yes, yes, I see. Uh, yeah, I maybe if you could read from there, uh, because I've made some changes. Okay. Please okay. go ahead. Okay, Chris, today we are going to talk about a proposal in Australia to legalize... To le okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then maybe you can switch back to your document at this point. I'm okay. sorry. Okay, uh, a proposal in Australia to legalize the possession of soft drugs. Rossi, let's start with a question for our listeners. When was the first international treaty to combat the sale and use of drugs signed? Yeah, Rossi, that's a difficult one. Go on. Give me a clue. Uh, sorry. Uh, no. Uh, let me see. What happened there? Oh, uh, oh, okay, please continue. I'm sorry, please continue. <laughs> okay, okay, Chris. Well, you'll have our usual three options. So, listen carefully. When was the first international treaty to combat the sale and use of drugs signed? Was in A, 1962, B, 1945, or C, 1912? Rossi. It helps to think about historical facts that took place at the time. So in the 60s, we had the hippies and so-called counterculture. In 1945, the end of World War II and 1912. Well, the Titanic sank. Okay, uh, and I'm going to get you to stop there. Thank you. Great job. Thank you for uh, using the, the downloaded document. <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> please, I'd like to uh, invite people to make any comments that they wish at this point. And so, does anybody have an idea of when this, when the first drug treaty was signed, the international drug treaty was signed? Any ideas? I believe it was in 1912. Okay, and, and why so early? <laughs> uh, because they were, uh, I believe drug is like a, a business for uh, obscure people <laughs> in governments. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So they, they starting to pro prohibit, it, prohibit uh, drugs in order to get more, uh, more income uh oh okay <laughs> From the all right okay great thank you 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 expressed your opinion well great teacher i don't know yes. but but i could see that it was in the end of the world war second and i think in this moment and at this moment we are we are living in a better situation and i think i'm almost of the people who are used the drugs was to used to how can I say to go away to the the rea reality to, to, to we say to escape to, to escape, escape from, from reality. the reality. So I think it was a big problem, a bad moment for all the world, and the people uh, used it too much because of it. I think about it. No, that's a great answer. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we say the Second World War or World War Two. All right, great. Now let's uh, keep moving on here. And so, uh, 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 Farhan, could you please read the next section, please? Hello, Farhan? Okay, now we, we can't hear you, Farhan. And so I'm going to move on to Isais. 
Could you please read the next selection of text? Yes, we're at the green uh, mark. Yes, yeah, please. World War II, and in 1912, well, the Titanic sank. Chris, okay, think about it. The answer will come by the end of the pro program. program. Have a crack at it. Yeah. Sorry. Crack. Yeah. Crack. Oh, to have a crack at something means to have a go or to try something. In this case, it means to try to guess the answer in the to the quiz. But it's also the name given to a particular kind of drug sold on the street. And I cannot see. And one, and one considered very harmful to a person's health. Yes, it is, and it, it is not defined as a soft drug. Often drugs are classified or organized according to the potential harm they can cause people. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to get you to stop there, thank you. And so they're, they're talking about the concept of hard drugs and soft drugs. Are people familiar with this? And can you, um, can you give me some examples of hard drugs or soft drugs? Uh, soft drugs is like marijuana. Yes. And hard uh, drugs is like cocaine. Sure, yes. All that stuff. Yeah. Carlos, so, do you have an example? Soft, it will be like natural. And ha hard drugs, it will be like chemically... Uh, Okay, now, uh, uh, now that's, that's a good idea, and remember this is an English class and I am not an expert, and, and so uh, we're just practicing our English, but according to the podcast, they classify the drugs by being either harmful or addictive, and, and so they usually classify soft drugs as not being as damaging or harmful or as addictive. I think that's the idea. So not necessarily natural or uh, chemical. Okay. Yeah, just because some other hard drugs uh, are natural, I guess. Uh, other examples of drugs? Uh, there is Valium. Uh, so, yeah, Valium. Yes, when yes. we are, uh, usually in the hospital we use it. Right, okay, so there is also uh, abuse of these prescription drugs. Yeah, yeah. good. Other examples, please? Co cocaine, um, okay. crack, crack. Yeah, and that's just another form of cocaine, really uh, definitely thought of as a hard drug, very, very addictive and very damaging. Uh, we we is the marijuana, right? Yes, we the the nickname for or slang term for marijuana is weed. Well, that's one of them, anyways. Okay, well we can we can move on because they do uh, give two examples of some of these soft drugs, and so I'm going to go to uh, Jadner. Could you please uh, read this next part here? Okay. Uh, hard drugs are those that are classified as most harmful or addictive, such as cocaine or heroin. Uh, crack cocaine would be one of them, uh, Rosy, and the soft ones are those that are sometimes seen as being less harmful, such as marijuana and ecstasy. These seem to be the ones now being uh, discussed in Australia. Sorry, just give me one second. All right. And uh, so they give uh, one of the uh, other examples that we didn't talk about is one of these chemical drugs, ecstasy, that a lot of people are taking at dances uh, and, and social events. All right, thank you. I'm, I'm going to go on to Joao. Could you read this for us, please? It begins with Chris. That's right. Me? Yes, please. Okay, uh, let's. That's uh, mm, that's right, uh, Chris. That's right. I'm right. Yes. Chris. 
Okay, uh, Chris, that's right. The Australian Foreign Minister has announced that he would like to send such drug discriminalized or made legal. Rosie, Rosie, that's very controversial. Why has he decided to say this, Chris? Well, let's listen to the BBC correspondent Duke Kennedy in Sydney. See if you can hear what personal experience the Australian Minister has of drugs. Okay, and I'll get you to stop there. All right, now again, we're talking about Australia. One of their politicians has made some controversial comments. And uh, let's move on. Uh, Mauricio, could you please read what uh, this uh, reporter says? Be from, okay, BBC Duncan Kennedy. Bob Carr is known to be a straight talker on many subjects. Now Mr. Carr says that when it, when it comes to what he calls soft drugs, there should be a policy, policy of this discriminalization. Mr. Carr, whose younger brother died from a heroin overdose, says the police are wasting their time and resources trying to stop individuals carrying these drugs. Okay. So, uh, and now that's a little bit confusing. So, what was the personal situation with this politician, Bob Carr? Uh, are you asking me? Yeah, sure. Oh. Oh well, that he sorry uh, that he has uh, a member of, of of his family, right? And that that he died, that he passed away because um, a heroin overdose. Okay, excellent, thank you. And so uh, now, what is he saying then? Uh, what is the police? What should the police be doing, according to Mr. Carr? And, and anybody can answer this. If you have a comment, just turn on your microphone. Wasting yeah, their up. time. Wasting their time. Uh, doing what? Uh, research and trying to stop individuals carrying this gro these drugs. Now, this is, I found this, now I'm a native speaker, <laughs> and I found this a little, uh, a little confusing. What is he talking about by these drugs? These drugs? Uh, what does that refer to? What drugs? That soft drugs. Yes, good. All right. He's talking about soft drugs. He's not talking about heroin, the drug that killed his brother, his younger brother. Uh, He's talking okay. about the soft drugs. And that police are wasting their time trying to stop people from, from using marijuana, for example, when they should be focusing on helping people who are addicted to heroin. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's the idea, I think. Uh, some comments, please? Anyone? Because they see the, the problem as a, like a security, like police and, and for, uh, the security, but they don't, they don't look at the problem like a health issue. Like a, Oh, good. Yeah, I, I think many people, uh, and, and again, we're not talking about producing drugs, smuggling drugs, trafficking drugs. Uh, I want to focus on use of drugs, personal use of drugs. And so uh, I, you said something very, very good there in that many people say uh, it's not crime and law enforcement. The issue of drugs is health. These people are addicted, or they need counseling, or they need education. That for, should be the focus. For so, example, right. mm -hmm. please for example, go ahead. Here in my in my country, Mexico, uh, they are. Uh, I think it was seven, six years ago. Six years ago, a president, uh, ex president Calderon, started. Uh, he called it uh, drug war. Yes. And and in. And instead of, of decreasing the consume of drugs, uh, it grow up. It yeah. grow up, and then the security. Uh, you you see a lot of uh, uh, insecurity, and a lot of dead people. Uh, and okay, and right. All messed up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so the consumption of drugs increased. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Right, and uh, and so what I'd like to do is to go on to Omar. 
Uh, Omar, could you please read this section for us? Okay. So it has to do with his brother and heroin overdose. He took an excessive amount of his on the, of this drug and died. Yes, the tragic experience of losing his brother to drugs has motivated him to call for soft drugs to be legalized. And as the reporter says, he seems to be a straight talker indeed. Someone who likes to speak very honestly and directly. But not everyone agree with him. Let's hear from the BBC correspondent in the Austrian. Okay. And uh, just uh, Farad, please, if you could please keep your microphone muted for us. We're hearing uh, your voice and people talking in the background, please. And so, great. Thank you, Omar. Uh, and I just wanted to help you with uh, motivated. 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 Yeah, that's the, the pronunciation. Okay, and so to be a straight talker, someone who's very, very direct and honest. All right, and then here is uh, some more of the report, and we're back to you, Carlos. Could you read this for us, please? Okay. Carlos, are you there? Yes, uh, you're talking about the report, BBC Duncan Kennedy? Please. Okay, uh, Mr. Carr's boss, the Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, said she didn't want to see any drought this decriminalized. Mrs. G Gillard said that people should continue to get help for their addiction and the police should carry, carry on trying to stop drought users. Okay, great. And, uh, sorry, just let me help. Uh, no, I forgot the word I was going to help you with. Uh, <laughs> no, great. Let, let's, oh, yes, it was Ms. Uh, just so that everyone knows, this is a, a woman. The Prime Minister of Australia is a woman, Julia. And this is the term Ms., which is, it's not Miss which is a, a single woman, and it's not Mrs., a married woman. Ms. is a term used, uh, a generic term, that neither shows that the woman is married, nor is she single. All right, great, thank you. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, so his boss said, no, uh, we are not going to be decriminalizing any drugs. Uh, Fabian, could you read this next selection for us? Okay. It begins I, I, with will, Rosie. I, I go. Ah. Rosie. Rosie. Ah. Now I rem remember where I heard this name. It was in the news. She is the foreign minister's boss. Julia Gillard is the Australian prime minister. Trees. And she didn't agree with him. She wants people to get help for their addiction of or their depends on drugs but she does not win one the criminalist crimi, the criminalization of any drug okay and Rossi, let me, let me stop you there thank you it's not alone in his yes, thinking so i'm just going to stop you there thank you okay uh, and and i think uh, to help with the pronunciation it's d decriminalization and so we do have the word to criminalize criminalization but in this case decriminalize or decriminalization and this is the what's British my decriminal decriminalization yeah decriminalization decriminalize <laughs> all right good good luck with that all right and i'm going to move on to uh, uh farad are you there Hello, Farad. Could you turn on your microphone now, please? Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes. And and so, okay. could you be continue reading from uh, Rosie? But Bob Carr. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Rosie. But Bob Carr is not alone in his thinking. Cheers. I have heard that there is a think tank in Australia that believes he has a point. 
This organization conducts research into a special or economic issue upon the government and at once the introduction of carefully controlled system to deal with these drugs. Uh, chairs, I uh, can a country such as Switzerland in uh, in a country such as a Switzerland in the Netherlands, they have organized carefully controlled programs where drugs users are given small amount of drugs such as heroin to help them. Okay, and, and yeah. I'll stop. I'll stop you there. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. And so I didn't know that Switzerland had a, a program, but I've heard of the program in the Netherlands. Okay, and just I wanted to invite anyone with a comment. I think they are they are uh, being smart, <laughs> smarter than our in my country. Oh, okay, by by doing what? You mean by, Switzerland by, and the Netherlands? By focusing on people uh, to help right. them to get rid of drugs. Yeah and uh, you know eliminating the need for these people to go out and commit crimes to get money to buy the drugs right? yeah. yeah that's sort of a different issue though giving people who are addicted to heroin enough heroin so that they can feel normal uh, I, I, I think that's a different issue because we're talking about decriminalizing soft drugs and heroin is not a soft drug and they, they I, I am sure that, that the government of Switzerland and, and Netherlands are uh, spending more, much less money than than here, with yeah. uh, with the security and all the stuff. Right, and and that term is you know to to wage a war on drugs, yeah, and uh, drug wars are when the criminal organizations are fighting with, between the two of them or between them. Uh, let's keep going. And so, Isais, uh, could you read a, a section here, please? Yes. Uh, yes, Rosy. Yes, it's a risky strategy as heroin is highly addictive. But by providing drugs in a controlled and legal way, they believe it can help to reduce crime and the health risk risks associated with drugs. But you know, I see the point of people worried about the harm drugs can cause. It it's it is a difficult subject, Chris. It is. Okay, great. So thank you. And uh, uh, Jadner, are you there? Uh, yes. Good. Uh, could you read this for us, please? Okay, uh, Rosie. Let's see what happens with this war on drugs during the next few months. But for now, I am curious about the quiz. Chris still haven't answered the question. Uh, Chris, and the question was, when was the first international treaty to combat the sale and use of drugs signed? And gave you three options. Was it in uh, 1962, 1945, 1912? Um, keep on? Please. Okay, Rosie, it must have been in 1962 because in the 60s there seemed to be many drugs around. Chris, how about 1912, Rosie? No, I think that's a bit too early. Chris, the answer is 1912. You see, 100 years ago, narcotics passed from country to country with minimal interference from the authorities, but that all changed with the International Opium Convention signing the highway. From then onwards, onwards, countries were committed to stopping their trade in opium, morphine and cocaine. Okay, and that's it. Uh, and I've edited the document a little bit. And so, uh, opium, morphine and cocaine. Oh, okay. and, uh, and then, of course, opium, I think, is refined and turned into heroin and the international courts are in The Hague that's how we pronounce it in English The Hague, Hague. <clears throat> alright great Hague. and so uh, interesting concept and now what we're going to do is um, I'm going to uh, unplug my microphone the and Hague? I'm go 
And it's I'm going. What? It's in Hello? Netherlands, right? I'm the sorry. Hague. The Hague. It is in Netherlands. The Hague. Yes. The international courts in the Hague. Okay. Thank you. Right. Uh, and so uh, I have my iPod. I'm going to play the podcast, which is approximately six minutes long. So um, I hope that you have your PDF file that you can follow the transcript. I'm going to put on my screen share. Teacher, teacher. Yes. Uh, could you please uh, send me the link of the um, uh, now, PDF? Now I'm I'm hoping that people will put that in the uh, chat box. So the link, okay. the direct link to the document is in the chat box. Raul has put okay. it in there twice for us. Yes, it is. It is there. I can see it. Great. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to put on the screen share. Just give me one minute to get the audio playing and um, enjoy the podcast. It's six minutes long. Six Minute English from BBCLearningEnglish.com. Hello and welcome to Six Minute English from BBC Learning English. I'm Chris and I'm Rosie. And today we're going to talk about a proposal in Australia to legalise the possession of soft drugs. Rosie, let's start with a question for our listeners. When was the first international treaty to combat the sale and use of drugs signed? Ooh, that's a difficult one. Oh, go on, give me a clue. Well, you'll have our usual three options, so listen carefully. When was the first international treaty to combat the sale and use of drugs signed? Was it in A, 1962, B, 1945, or C, 1912? Well, it helps to think about historical facts that took place at the time. So, in the 1960s, we had the hippies and the so-called counterculture. In 1945, the end of World War II, and in 1912, well, the Titanic sank. Okay, think about it. The answer will come by the end of the program. Have a crack at it. Crack? Oh, to have a crack at something means to have a go or to try something. In this case, it means to try to guess the answer to the quiz. But it's also the name given to a particular kind of drug sold on the streets and one considered very harmful to a person's health. Yes, it is, and it's not defined as a soft drug. Often drugs are classified or organised according to the potential harm they can cause people. Hard drugs are those that are classified as the most harmful or addictive, such as cocaine or heroin, and crack cocaine would be one of them. Yes, and the soft ones are those that are sometimes seen as being less harmful, such as marijuana and ecstasy. These seem to be the ones now being discussed in Australia. That's right. The Australian Foreign Minister has announced that he would like to see soft drugs decriminalised or made legal. That's very controversial. Why has he decided to say this? Well, let's listen to the BBC correspondent Duncan Kennedy in Sydney. See if you can hear what personal experience the Australian Minister has of drugs. Bob Carr is known to be a straight talker on many subjects. Now, Mr. Carr says that when it comes to what he calls soft drugs, there should be a policy of decriminalisation. Mr. Carr, whose younger brother died from a heroin overdose, says that police are wasting their time and resources trying to stop individuals carrying these drugs. So it has to do with his brother and a heroin overdose. He took an excessive amount of this drug and died. Yes, his tragic experience of losing his brother to drugs has motivated him to call for soft drugs to be legalised. And as the reporter says, he seems to be a straight talker indeed, someone who likes to speak very honestly and directly. But not everyone agrees with him. Let's hear from the BBC correspondent in Australia. Mr Carr's boss, the Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, said she didn't want to see any drugs decriminalised. Ms Gillard said that people should continue to get help for their addiction and the police should carry on trying to stop drug usage. Ah, now I remember where I've heard this name. It was in the news. She's the Foreign Minister's boss. Julia Gillard is the Australian Prime Minister. And she didn't agree with him. She wants people to get help for their addiction or their dependence on drugs. 
but she does not want the decriminalisation of any drug. But Bob Carr is not alone in his thinking, Chris. I've heard that there's a think tank in Australia that believes he has a point. This organisation conducts research into social or economic issues for the government. And it wants the introduction of a carefully controlled system to deal with these drugs. In countries such as Switzerland and the Netherlands, they have organised carefully controlled programmes where drug users are given small amounts of drugs, such as heroin, to help them. Yes, it's a risky strategy as heroin is highly addictive. But by providing drugs in a controlled and legal way, they believe it can help to reduce crime and the health risks associated with drugs. But, you know, I see the point of people worried about the harm drugs can cause. It's a difficult subject, Chris. It is. Let's see what happens with this war on drugs during the next few months. But for now, I'm curious about the quiz. Chris, I still haven't answered the question. And the question was, when was the first international treaty to combat the sale and use of drugs signed? And I gave you three options. Was it A, in 1962, B, 1945, or C, 1912? Hmm... Must have been in 1962, because in the 60s, there seemed to be many drugs around. How about 1912? No, I think that's a bit too early. The answer is 1912. You see, a hundred years ago, narcotics passed from country to country with minimal interference from the authorities. But all that changed with the International Opium Convention signed in The Hague. From then onwards, countries were committed to stopping the trade in opium, morphine and cocaine. Really? Was it that early? Yes, and unfortunately we are now late, by the way. We have to finish <laughs> the programme. But we'll leave you with today's words. Yes, of course. They are a straight talker, decriminalisation, a heroin overdose, boss, addiction, think tank, carefully controlled, committed, Thanks very much, Rosie. And that's all we've got time for today. So bye for now. Bye bye. That was. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear all you. All right, great. And so I hope that everyone was able to listen to that. <laughs> yes. They're. Uh, uh, I'm just going to stop my, uh, pause my burbling window. And, and so this is a, a, common, um, a common debate that's been going on. That, that We say that debates go back and forth. Uh, there is a movement for decriminalization, and then there is a movement towards being more strict. And this concept of, uh, of having a war on drugs to try and eliminate drugs by uh, security forces, etc. And so what I would like to do is just to ask people for a final comment. We have a good 10 minutes left. And so um, uh, what I'd like to try and focus on, though, is what can we do, what positive things can we do to try and limit the amount of drug use in the country and how do you help people who have become addicted to drugs? Uh, but feel free to make your own comments. And so let's go back to, uh, well, actually, I'd like to go and start with Omar. Uh, Omar, could you uh, go ahead with a comment, please? Mm -hmm. I believe we should work on the education. Uh, we should work how to, uh, instead of uh, forbidding everything and make everything forbidden and banned, uh, let's start with changing our mind, our kids' mind. I disagree with most of us when we think uh, 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 drugs are just a fad. So, uh, I remember this uh, this uh, this story, this article I read about the U.S., where the U.S. tried uh, to limit their health care, so they encourage people to go into the gym. And have a fit and uh, and take care of their health uh, by giving them money for each key, uh, for each pound they lose. 
people uh, people were, were people were uh, people were surprised why would U.S. do the, such a thing, but the government of the U.S. were very intelligent and knew that when she when the government when the government does something like this. Uh, it will uh, it will uh, decrease the uh, uh, it will decrease the budget we, uh, of the uh, uh, what we call it uh, uh, yeah, health insurance healthcare and health insurance healthcare, yeah, yeah great so uh, investing in prevention yeah yes. I think uh, that's what a lot of people talk about great and uh, excellent thank you uh, Mauricio uh, could you share what your comment with us please. Uh, yes, well, I think uh, this problem has been increased uh, due, uh, along the time. It has been increasing? Uh, yes. Yes, sorry, yes, it has been increasing mm -hmm. through the time. And, and yeah? Yes. And so and uh, some, some positive things that we can do to, to stop this increase? Yes, sure. Yes, yeah, sure. Of course, uh, we we need to be more, I don't know, uh, more aware yes. about the the dealing drug the drugs problem, and well, try to educate it ourselves, to be to be to yes to educate uh, our ourselves to to let or to stop this this problem. It, okay. I think that everything starts with us. Yeah, and then uh, people can make their own comments, but I wanted to connect those two comments together. So we have Omar saying we need to educate children and change their minds, and you're saying we need to educate ourselves, but like what, what do we need to teach people uh, specifically? So, uh, but, but please go ahead, Joao, with, with your comment. I hope that I can get two comments from everyone. I think, teacher, that's... Uh, how our how our friends have said how I have told for us education is a solution so I think teacher can the teachers the teacher can to the teacher can teach for the students the the consequence of the choice of this I don't I don't think that you can make this problem disappear I think that he is it's always we be with us, so it will it will always be an optician of us. So I think it's a show for us the consequence of to choose this. Yeah. Okay. Great. Excellent. Thank you. And no. uh, uh, Isais, a comment from you, please. Yes. Well, I I agree with my uh, classmates and all of what they say. I. You, I will uh, add only the that we have to uh, talk to the young people and the children. So to talk to to let them know uh, that not only not only forbidden them the, the drugs and, and all the, the that, uh, but we have to to talk about the the consequences. The consequences of cons consuming drugs, and they and I think they will understand if we if we know how how to talk to them. Yes. Okay. Great. Excellent. And um, good. Uh, let Let's uh, move on. Uh, Fada, a comment from okay. you, please. <coughs> okay. So um, a drugs is a serious problem. So. Um, we need to uh, award the people from the dangers of the um, drugs because it can destroy the people's health, it can destroy uh, their, uh, I mean that uh, it can make his life miserable. So we need to award the people from this uh, dangers uh, and uh, so it must be the way that uh, uh, we can control uh, up to a certain limit uh, the uh, addiction of drugs. So uh, now uh, if uh, uh, people and now one step uh, that the government must uh, be taken and that is that uh, uh, um, instead of uh, uh, catching the people and uh, bringing to the jail, uh, I mean I'm talking about the drugs addicts. 
so the governments need to uh, ban they need to stop the uh, drugs de uh, to uh, stop the drugs that are coming from the um, other country uh, to this uh, to the some uh, other country so um, right. the so government stop the supply of drugs but yeah uh, yeah, yeah I, I excellent uh, comments and thank you. you you said them well uh, Carlos okay. yes uh, thank you um I agree with the comments and I think um, first of all the government have to uh, recognize that uh, we have a problem in our societies and and about the relation between um, drug abuse and the criminalization and for that reason they have to spend money to control this kind of a problem and for example we we know about uh, some centers to to treat or deal with uh, alcoholic people but um, at least in my country we we don't have uh, these kind of centers specifically for people who uh, abuse of this kind of drugs and but uh, but of course the education and, and recognize that people have a problem is the first step yeah okay that, great excellent and so uh, back to you Omar Fine and fine, you mean? Yes. Uh, no. Another another comment, please. Another short comment, please. Omar, are you there? Hello, Omar. No. Oh, uh, so maybe a connection problem, and we're we're just down to the last few seconds. So Mauricio, could you give us a comment to uh, end the class, please? Yes, I, well, I think that one way to stop this this uh, madness is stop our con our consuming our we are living in a consuming society. Uh huh. Yes, yeah. and we want to to buy everything, cars. Like uh, we want to be in a luxury way, but in 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 fact, we don't need those things. Why? Why for? What for? So. Uh, Maybe could uh, we can destroy this this process? Uh, okay. Stopping to uh, let how to say stop buying, stop yeah. buying things. So, so we uh, we need to stop the consumption of drugs uh, because you know I mean that's where the money's coming from. This is a money problem as well. Yeah. So uh, but, I really appreciated listening to all of your opinions. Thank you so much for your participation about this issue. I'm doing another similar class on this uh, tomorrow, Sunday night, at, uh, at the same time, another podcast on a similar topic. So if you'd like more practice uh, uh, with the vocabulary and with speaking about this issue, you can join me for that class. And I, and I welcome all of you to come to my Facebook page and put down specific topics that you want to talk about. Um, uh, I really need specific ideas from students 